Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Spyfall Time Travel. This was sent to me by Cryptozoic Entertainment and is designed by Alexander Ushan. Now, I've already reviewed the original Spyfall and Spyfall 2 in episode 32, so I'm not going to go over all the details again, so go watch that episode if you want to know exactly how to play. But basically, the idea is that you and your friends each all get a location on a card, except one of you does not get a card with the location, it just says the word spy, and you're all asking each other questions, and you're trying to figure out who doesn't know where you are. That's basically the gist of the game. Now, unlike DC Spyfall, which I also reviewed in episode 49, this doesn't offer any new modules or special rules or anything. It is just a version of Spyfall with 30 new locations uh, with all different periods of history. The world of Spyfall has been turned upside down like sand through an hourglass. The classic game of probing questions, clever answers, and lots of suspicions is back, and it's heading to the past and the future. So, just like the previous game, you get these bags full of cards, they all have the word, uh, card spy, and they have different locations, uh, location decks, uh, and let's just gonna go through them. We have the Battle of Waterloo, 1815 AD, Native American Tribe, 1870 AD, Hot Air Balloon, 1890 AD, the Coliseum, uh, first Olympic Games, 776 BC, also note the fun art of the spy in all of these. Uh, Tokyo 2049, uh, the Spanish Inquisition, 1675 AD, Arabian Caravan, 650 AD, Stonehenge, 3100 BC, Deadwood Mining Camp, 1876 AD, Post-Apocalyptic Wasteland, 2085, Viking Longship, 900 AD, Lunar Base, 2035 AD, Leonardo's Studio, 1515 AD, Shaolin Monastery, 464 AD, Sherwood Forest, 1190 AD, Neanderthal Cave, 200,000 BC. Cannibal Tribe, 1505 AD. Chicago Speak Easy, 1925 AD. Musketeers of the Guard, 1632 AD. Medieval Tournament, 1200 AD. Old West Saloon, 1885 AD. Battle of Berlin, 1945 AD. The Great Pyramids, 2560 BC. In the final row, Ancient Troy, 1180 BC. Ottoman Harem, 1500 AD. Woodstock Festival, 1969 A.D., The French Revolution, 1793 A.D., and Ninja Academy, 1450 A.D., and The Black Plague, 1351 A.D. Uh, and note that unlike uh, Spyfall 2, this is a full 30 locations, which is nice. Also, just like the original game, the individual decks contain roles. I'm not going to show all of these because I don't want to spoil it, but like, for example, in Leonardo's studio, you could be Leonardo, or you could be... Uh, an envoy of the Pope, or a Florentine scientist. You've got like a couple different, it's like the original in that if you want to play with the roles uh, to kind of spice up your game, you still have that option as well. So what can I say? It's by fall, but with new locations. But uh, unlike Spyfall 2, I appreciate that this has uh, the same number of locations as the first game, and it's a fun idea. I think the art on the cards is still great. Uh, if you're a big fan of Spyfall and you fully exhausted your original locations in 1 and 2, uh, then this is a really fun breath of fresh air to rejuvenate your experience, because it's not just locations, it's time periods and, you know, other things to sort of think about. I will say, though, if not everyone at the table is an expert on history, it might be more challenging or even inaccessible at times, uh, which can be kind of funny because sometimes you find out just how little some of your friends know about history. Uh, but I'd say 90% of them are all generally well known. I did go through all of them, so you'll have an idea of how familiar you are with the, with the time periods. But there are a few where some people might not be too familiar with, at least not familiar with enough to get super specific with questions. Um, I also found it interesting that compared to the original Spyfall and playing this, uh, with this set of locations, the questions you ask are kind of different, and they're more focused on culture or technology than just general, like, oh, what do you see? Like, what do you, you know, it, you can kind of go, it's more time focused, like, which is interesting. Is it modern day? Is it future? Which is a nice twist. I still think you should start with the original first. Personally speaking, I don't think this is necessarily the one I'd pick to jump into, but I did play this game with people who had never played Spyfall before, and they still really enjoyed it. So, if the idea of the time travel aspect is just so appealing to you, 
you could easily dive right in. It has 30 locations, like I said, which is a nice, which is nice. That doesn't feel like a smaller version of the original. So if you're a big Spyfall fan and or think time based locations sounds fun. Yeah, it's good. I recommend it. However, if none of your friends know anything about history, maybe stick with original Spyfall. Uh, although, like I said, it can be funny to really realize just how little your friends might know about certain aspects of history. Um, so, your mileage may vary depending on how much you care about history, um, but if you like history or think this sounds cool, it's just as good as uh, the first two Spyfalls, for sure. Definitely like this more than DC Spyfall, which I thought was old, very niche and very inaccessible for people who don't know DC. This, I think most people can appreciate. 